what? You're going to hack me? I, I mean, if I knew how to, I would, but I, I don't know how to. You did the computer. You just go like this. <laughs> you wouldn't hack. I got to, and I need to have as many screens as possible, and I just look at them all. Oh, yeah, it's coming. Here comes the worm. I think that's a line that, that they say. Worms, yeah? Here comes the worm. That's what they always say. <laughs> that's it. That's before, it. B- before you launch yourself on someone's computer, it says, Here comes the worm. Here comes the worm. Hey, watch it. Welcome to Hate Watching with Dan and Tony. I'm Dan. I'm Tony. We're the guys who watched the movies that came out in the 80s. I think this movie yeah, what is this? came 80, out in the 80s. Something 82, 80s? 84? It was before Something. I was born, but very close. Yeah, this is um and this was a this was a Tony pick, so I'm, I'm gonna just let I'm gonna throw it over and throw it to Tony. It was of course oh, 82. Tony. I was right. I'm 82? gonna knock this out of the park. Watch this, Dan. Uh, this movie is something that I've wanted to watch for a long time. Um, you know, sometimes you feel like you need an excuse to do something that you know is probably not good, but you're like, I, I'm very curious. This was my excuse to watch this movie that's been on my radar for many years because it's not, um, appropriate and it's not good. So I couldn't find a reason to watch it until we had this podcast, but. I love a teen sex comedy, Dan. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a great genre. It's a dying breed. We should bring them back. Not like this, but we should bring them back. I'm going to lead the charge. I'm going to lead the charge. I'm going to start writing some movies. Uh, you'll, you'll see. It's all about Tony having sex with teenagers. No, that's not good. That's, <laughs> that's not good. No one's okay with that. Just like, um, Scott, just like the star of our movie, Scott Bayo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scotty. Scotty, oh, Scotty. Well, this movie's called Zapped. If you haven't heard of it, I don't blame you. Uh, I don't think that it was received well when it came out. It does have a little bit of a cult following, which is concerning, I would say, at the least. But, you know, hey, good. you love what you love, you know? What do you? How do you feel, Dan? Is this a movie? That's a fair point. Um, Only there are the, elements. There are elements, exactly. <laughs> they employ some of the elements of movie making. Yeah. Other yeah. elements of movie making, they, they, choose, yeah. they choose not to employ. But let, let me turn this back around on you, Dan. Sure. Just because a movie has all of those elements, does it, it, does it make it good? I would say no. So they just cut out the fat. They were like, <laughs> you know what? It's not going to help our movie at all, so let's skip it. Yeah, this, we're just going to... Leave out any kind of arc or, or learning or motivation you wanna, or you want a character, character arc. Character arc. Let's, let's just skip all of that. And what we'll do is we'll just have something happens, then it is loosely connected to something happened, then it is loosely, loosely connected to another thing happening, and then the movie ends. Yeah. I and I have some questions on this ending because I am a little confused. But you know. um this was uh, originally intended as a parody of Carrie, from uh, okay. my understanding. Okay, I, w- I wondered about that. But let's pretend that it was. That that would be an interesting movie. It would have been an interesting movie. But what they did instead was just kind of kept telekinesis mm-hmm. <laughs> and then threw out all the rest of the elements of Carrie. Yes. I don't. You know Let's, what? I'll save it. I'll I save mean, it. It, the whole the, yeah. So he the kid gets telekinesis, and then we end up at the dance at the end. But right. and but he he's, exacts his revenge. Uh, but about what? No one was mean <laughs> to him through the whole movie. He just turns out he's kind of a perverted dick. <laughs> he, he just at the very end of the movie, he he decides to go all carry for no reason, no reason <laughs> <you're>, at all. <laughs> and you're kind of like, well, I guess we just left that in there because we we thought that was, was what our movie was about. The whole movie was based on that one scene, but the rest of the movie changed. But they kept the anchor, Dan. They kept it. <laughs> you got to hang on to your ideas; they're precious. You know, they they shot the last scene, you know, and then they were like, well, now we'll make the rest of the movie and not really have it relate to the, the, <laughs> they the final scene. Engineered. <laughs> they they un, un, uh, they reverse unengineered it, you know. It's like, ah. I did read. 
I yeah. don't know if you did your homework on this movie. Dan. I did some. This is the most reading I've ever done about a movie. I, I full of school. I love this movie. I, this is the most, the dumbest, most irresponsible movie I've ever seen in my life. Um, but I did read that they had filmed a bunch of the movie and then Porky's came out. Oh. And Porky's was very sexy, some nudity. And then they were like, oh, we need nudity. It was originally oh. had a, was going to be a PG rating. And then after Porgies came out, they went back and they're like, we got to add some titties. We got <laughs> we to gotta spice this baby up. And so they did. But the lead lady, uh, blonde lady, what's her name? Uh, Heather, her Thomas. Name. Yeah. Heather Thomas. Yeah. Heather Thomas refused to go nude. Yeah. Um, so they got a body double. Did you see that in the credits? I didn't in see the it credits, in the credits. In the credits, there's one of the roles is uh, Heather Thomas refused to go nude. There was a body double. I'm paraphrasing, but Wait, that it is said in the that credits. It, it said that in the it credits? It said it in the credits because she was so upset that they still used her face on someone else's body without asking her. And it was just a photo, right? It, well, there's a photo, and then yeah, during the dance, he takes off her clothes to distract her. Oh, we'll we'll get there because that... The, fo- the photo is literally the worst thing in the in it's the world. The- <laughs> it is. It is literally a guy took scissors and like cut it out just, his face it and gl- glued you it. Know, <laughs> pulled out a pulled out a Playboy centerfold and glued this this just wrongly her scaled face. head yep. on the thing. It's not even the same skin tone. Like <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> no, it's bizarre. Don't, it's great don't, stuff. Tony did did some forensic. Uh, I forensic did. A, I did a pause. pause. I did a quick five second pause. You know, just uh, I don't think that's her. <laughs> I did not do a pause, and I, and I knew it was not her. I was just like, no. I didn't actually do a pause there. Now, do you I know didn't... anything about Heather Thomas? I here's what I read. She was in a show, she Fall on, Guy. She's on Fall Guy with Lee Majors. Yeah, yeah, uh, Lee Majors. Up, as I remember, a fairly popular TV show. We watched it all the time. I, I she believe was, so. She, I mean, she was slash. She's smoking hot. Oh. Sh- I'm yeah no no she's gorgeous she's gorgeous yeah. um I read that she, not that I, she wants to me to air her dirty laundry but she got a little uh hooked on the uh, oh. you know the powder the dust is that what you call cocaine sure. powder, that, <laughs> I don't know angel dust it's angel not dust not, yeah, it's not yeah, angel. yeah yeah it's not angel dust. um and then she like got hit by a car or something oh, and, she hit and, by then a car? She, and then she quit acting those are the those are the cliff notes that I saw well, the other key thing was, is she is one of the original poster girls from the 70s. Her poster what was, does that mean? She said they made a poster of her and you used to go into record stores and places in the mall and buy her poster. And her poster was. Now, is this, is this like a poster that I use for dirty things as a, as I'm growing up? I, I would think the so. The answer is yes. Okay. The answer is yes. Okay. Let me look at the poster. Yeah. Oh, actually, there were a couple of posters, but there's one with her in a bikini that is, you know, and you can still buy the poster. Her in this pink bikini. Should I get it and replace one of these posters back here, Dan? Not if you want to stay married. Um, That's fair. Good point. Thanks for looking out. Yeah. So basically, she was, I mean, I don't know if the poster came out before this movie or after this movie, but that poster Mm. was emblematic. That's a poster that they would put in movies, you know, on the wall. Maybe, Got it. But you know what? I'm saying. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Um. So, uh, and the stars of this movie, or the star, the other stars of this movie, Charles in charge. We got Scott Bayou and Willie Ames. Am I saying also, is that right? Also, also known as Bible Man. Bible Man is was that his nickname? That is what he went on to do later in life. Is he did a show for a number of years, kind of direct a video show, I think. Direct great a VHS great, great, of a great. character called Bible Man. Who? What's the theme song for Bible Man? I'd like to hear that. I Bible no Man, saving your soul, one book at a time, uh, one Bible one, at a time, one book at a time, baby. Uh, um, I'm gonna have to find that. I want to see that. And Scott Bio turned into a raging Republican, or maybe didn't turn into, was always a raging Republican. I'm sure he always was. Yeah, look at this movie. You know? And just left California because it was too- Oh, did he? Ca- oh, yeah. He, he's like, I'm leaving California. Too Smart. damn woke out here. I'm like, yeah, yeah it's oh, a good move. Oh, I mean, see ya. you know, we're not super, as, 
as a group, we're not super welcoming. Let's be honest. There's there's like a thing in conservative media where they're like, people are leaving California, to which all Californians say, please. Right, it's fine. Please. That's cool, man. Like we, we we're we all could. good here. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't need we do not need our population in California to continue to go up. We are happy for it to go down for hey, a while. Yeah, can actually we should have a mass exodus so housing prices go down a little bit and I can f- afford like, you know, a shed. Yeah. I would love it. So yeah, so Scott is uh uh, conservative darling and uh, not Great. so much a darling of Hollywood. I don't, I mean, I'm sure he does some amount of work, but who knows? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember the last time I saw him. So him and Kevin Sorbo do not get a lot of good roles based on their uh, conservative activism. But boy, oh boy, was Hercules great. That's a good show. It's kind <laughs> it's of sad. A great show. Woo. Love that. So, uh, so zapped. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Let's do zapped. Us, we start in the laboratory. Scott Bayo has. We these... start with a rocking soundtrack. Okay, we're we're outside. We're in an establishing shot of a school, and there's some sort of '80s rock happening. And I've never heard this song before in my life. That's how you know it's a good soundtrack. I think they're all lookalike songs. You know, where okay. you where you have a song that you like, and you of course cannot afford it, so you hire right. some so other like, band do to do something similar to this. Please, just, just do this. Yeah. and so yeah. and so every one of the songs, you're like, this is familiar. I do not but know this I've song. Never heard but it's it familiar. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I thought it was great. I kind of want to see if I could find it somewhere. This is a good soundtrack. I wonder what that is. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they did a soundtrack. Yeah. So I, he, I rocked out the whole time. That's all I'm gonna say. He has a, an aquarium, and he has mice with scuba helmets on that uh-huh. he is is testing. And yeah. they're, they're really mice, and they really have scuba helmets. It is the most it's, amazing thing I've ever seen. I was so afraid for those weird. mice's lives, but they I lived. Think we, Dan, they lived in the movie. Do you know how many mice we probably lost on the set of this movie? Probably. I think it's in the dozens. I, I don't know. I don't want to start drama, but I feel like there's a lot of dead rodents on the set of Zapped. I just want to imagine that those two rats were the only mice, and they, they, they just made it through. They made it through. I, I just want to believe that. You know, I let's let's do it, Dan. Let's do it. Magic. Magic has happened. Collectively believe. <laughs> and so he's... He's getting one of the mouse mice drunk with a little so, bit of but so drunk. Check Daniels. He said he said it's the equivalent of ten pints, right? Oh, to, uh, like a human. That? That's what he said. And I was like, if I drink ten pints as a guy that doesn't drink, much like mice don't drink, I'm dead. I am <laughs> dead. I'm so dead. Super dead. Yeah. So, so he's, oh. he's he's doing it for the scuba club to help them understand the effects of alcohol in scuba diving. But why? Why is the scuba club getting drunk and diving? That's dangerous, guys. And you're like, this is interesting and weird. Okay. (laughs) It's a choice, and I appreciate it. So in addition to that, he's also growing weed, which he and Willie Ames characters, who's named Peyton, he's named Barney. Literally the worst name for character. Peyton for Willie Ames' character is fine. But Barney for him is just... No, it doesn't make any sense. It's not good. Because he doesn't play a Barney. But Barney and Bernie. You know, you got to get that alliteration for your Um, love couple. Yeah. So he is also growing pot, which they're going to sell. He's also growing orchids. For the principal, he's, he's, for some he's reason, doing that so never pays many off. things. He's doing a bunch of different projects. Good for him. But they never pay off why he's growing orchids for the principal. They don't pay off why, but they do use the orchid when he oh. deliver he gives it to her for prom and he's like, It's one of my flowers. So yeah, no, I mean, that's they, a payoff, Dan. The, the thread is through there, but the, the whole setup is that he's, the gro- yeah. he's <laughs> growing them for the principal to show up yeah. the principal's ex-wife at some sort of competition that never like happens. A, like a best orchid festival? Yeah, I'd love to see that scene. That would be wonderful. <laughs> no, we did not need that scene. <laughs> it's on the cutting room floor somewhere. We need a director's cut of Zapped. Yeah, so we meet Willie Ames, we meet Scott Bio, Bayo, and then they... They yeah, I got there. you saying buy you now. That's great. I got yeah. you. And then they've got two more pals. They're wearing like Letterman's jackets for unknown reasons. 
Um, but I, I will guess, say, I guess they're on these, the team. They're all on these the team. school colors are beautiful. This oh. this like baby blue that they're wearing. I would have worn the shit out of that. And here come two more of the guys, one of whom's got to be thirty five years old. <laughs> ah, you're you're underselling it, Dan. This this the bigger guy is at least older than me. Cause my like I got these crow's feet here. He had double crows. Like he was fucking old. I should have looked him up. <laughs> I wish and of I course, done it. It's supposed to be high school, and so at times it's super high school kids, and then other times there's just these guys and girls just that are like <laughs> just, just fully grown people. <laughs> I don't know. We just we uh, just I need actions. Bernadette was the only one that was still high school age. She was, I believe, hmm. eighteen, and everyone else was in their twenties. Uh, uh, so boom, they're walking down the the thing, and and Willie Ames Peyton character. We begin to understand that he's sleazy. He takes a picture of Jane, who is Heather Thomas. Her panties just takes a picture. Not only does he just take a picture, but then she gets like upset about it. And what does he say? Do you remember what he says? Well, she says, "I'm going to sue." Yeah, and he says, and "What well, does he say as they walk away to his boys?" I don't know. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to look it up because it was pretty <laughs> It was pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Here we go. As they're walking away, he turns to his boys and he goes, oh, I'm getting so tired of girls around here. They're so immature. After he just took a picture <laughs> of her underwear against her will. I mean, they, that it basically sets the tone for what you're getting into in this movie, which is not good. Cut to the multi-purpose room, uh, big assembly for the big baseball game, I guess. Uh, I, I guess so. Dan. It felt like it was does, for a basketball game, but it was for well, the baseball Well, it should game. be because does baseball have cheerleaders? I've never seen baseball with cheerleaders. But they they definitely have cheerleaders for yeah, baseball that's, in that's, this movie. That's why you assumed it was going to be basketball, but it was not. It was for baseball. Yep. Um. They're the Penguins, Heather Thomas, kind of the head cheerleader, I guess. Uh, Seems like it. Yeah. Barney's sitting out there, and there's like super hot girl, like with the skirt and the stockings. And the, Definitely yeah, yeah. not something a high school girl would ever wear. There's a bunch of, I mean, I listen, I didn't go to high school in the 80s. I don't know what the rules were. You couldn't wear it today. I'll tell you, you'll be sent home immediately. Yeah, there were no girls in my my high school that wore something. Yeah, I mean, like either I it wouldn't be allowed. I I mean, and who let you go out of the house? And that's probably not a good question to ask. I don't think I'm allowed to say that. Uh, the three punk guys show up. One of which is wearing an Otter Pops <laughs> T-shirt. They sort of go bra bra bra, and then sit down. And they're literally going to have one more scene, and that's all we get yep, from them. Yep, he comes back later. The main guy, which um, is really sad. Is he wearing a plastic vest? It looks plastic. I don't remember. I don't feel like they had enough money for leather, so they just went with plastic. It's very uh, it shiny. Been, yeah, there could be there be there could be vinyl and all that kind of stuff because there oh, was a vinyl, okay. Vinyl and and leather because there was certainly a crossover between bondage communities and punk rock communities at this point. Oh, I interesting. remember years ago okay. when I was a punk rocker, I went to the the hipster British store and I bought like these, these pants and they were, you know, checked green and they, but they were like made out of this. Do we have pictures of this Dan? Oh God, no. But they what? were made, they were made out of this terrible material that just tore almost instantly. And <laughs> uh, they were, they what, were a sh- what a shame, man. Those were great pants. I can't believe you lost them so early. Yeah. Um, so it was a rally. I wrote for the basketball team. It was not for the basketball nope. team. No, swing and a miss, Dan. You know, that that's what they say when you assume things. You get them wrong. Uh, and then you look foolish. Peyton goes to, like, the counselor, and then it's like, hey, counselor. And she's like, come into my office. I, Dan. Did you see I, this one coming? Not only did I not see this coming, but it also goes nowhere, which is very confusing to me. So he, she... He's like, hey, we have to redo your pictures. The first round didn't come out. And she's like, come in this private office where we can be alone. And then they fuck, which is crazy on its own. But then at one point she goes, you're not going to forget about me when you go to college, are you? Or something like that. 
So she's clearly the jealous type. She's insecure. She never comes back the rest of the movie in that capacity. Yep. She she interacts with the principal a couple of times, but never says it. another word to any of the primary Peyton characters. Peyton spends the rest of the movie harassing other women, and she never gets jealous. She never says anything. He never meets up with her again. It makes no sense. <laughs> There's no reason for this to be in the movie. Except uh, kind of a sexy scene. Except with, it uh, was pretty cool. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, good for him. <laughs> And I mean, this is this is what you know. Teenage boys want to see. They want to think that they're going to go in there and hook up with the pretty hot. And I uh, thought it, Dan. I thought it. I wished it. I dreamed it. it never happened. No. Nope. Hollywood ruins my life. Uh, boom. Uh, we're back to Barney. Uh, the coach comes in there and he's like looking for the alcohol, and he spills the growth <laughs> formula into the weed formula. Did you did you see what they're called? So the growth formula is super grow plant food, okay. is what the piece of tape says on it. With a, and in, the in other, sharpie, yeah. in sharpie, yep, just written by someone on the day because they're like, I guess people aren't going to know what these are. We better tell them. And then the other one is just cannabis extract. Cannabis just extract in school is that allowed? Well, he's making he's, my, he's making it right, but the principal doesn't know he's making weed. Right? Like, they sneak in there later because she's like, there's weed in here. It's bad. And I then mean, they burn it. Would you, would you really label your thick cannabis extract and leave it sitting just, on the table? No, you would not do He that. hides the weed in the back of the thing so no one knows it. But then he just writes it on a piece of paper, like, right in front. Yep. Doesn't yes, make does. any sense, guys. So um, the coach spills it. And then... He's like, you know, he, he gives Barney the speech. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be whoring around. And he's like, That's I right, wish I, w- I wish I was whoring around. It's a Scott's character. Yeah, and the coach is like, women are bad, which yeah. is a theme of this movie. And why? Uh, and, he, and he goes, first comes women, then comes the whiskey. <laughs> I was like, That's actually a pretty good line. And, and what are, what are the women? What is what does his wife keep him away from? Okay, now this is this is a, a running theme through the movie. This poor guy. Okay, he's getting a little bit older, but this poor guy, all he wants is his salami, and she and, won't give him the salami. She takes it from him. She hides it from him. He just wants his meat, ma'am. Okay, and he's so mad about it the whole movie. He can't stop talking about how much he wants his salami. Brings it back to salami all the time. I love it. I, this is my favorite joke of the whole movie. The salami. This guy, all he wants is his salami, and she's keeping it from him, and he hates his wife for it. Hates his wife. Um, oh. Willie Ames comes in there, pours beer into the solution. So now we've got growth solution, yeah, cannabis solution, and beer, and beer, and boom, in comes Bernadette. <sighs> yeah, Bernie. Yeah. Now, do you know her from Facts of Life? So I did yes and no is the answer. I recognized her, but could not place where I knew her until I looked it up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, right. That makes so she, sense. So she was sort of a bit player on there? When, I don't, she wasn't one of the main people. No, she wasn't right? one of the main four. She she yeah. was in a, a bunch of episodes, but not all the episodes, and was a tertiary, secondary or tertiary character. Yeah. The um, facts of life. Wearing glasses, wants to get an interview with Barney for the school paper, yep. and then, then Barney gives the mouse some of the solution, and boom, the mouse has telekinesis, and is telekinesis the um <laughs> telekinesising <laughs> telekinesing uh using his telekinesis to to move the cheese around yep great stuff <laughs> and then barney tries to give the thing the mouse more of the solution and he's and the, he's like no <laughs> he's no the mouse says no and pushes it away from him it's the saddest part of the movie to me and that's when, um, and that's and that's when he it crashes the ground, puff of smoke, some maybe some lightning in there. And yeah, boom. there's some co- really cool digital effects. Yeah, probably <laughs> probably optical effects, not digital effects. What is an optical effect? Is that with my eyes? Optical effect is when you. Um, so a digital effect is when you use a computer to put it in there. Right. Correct. An optical yeah. effect is what what you'll do is you'll. You'll maybe make a little bit of animation, say, you know, a little, mm. and then what you do is you take the That's two it. the two films and then you run them through an optical projector and yep. make them into one piece of film that has wow. both of the things on there. Wow. That's how they okay. use special effects. 
Cool. I love it. Well, they did it. Yeah. So, boom. He goes home to his parents, and we start the stuff with the, the, the weird parents. <laughs> the, the weird mom thinks he's on drugs. His and mom so she, is so crazy. They attack him in his room to check him for track marks. For for needle marks, right? Like, what? Yeah. I, I mean, See, listen, the 80s were a wild time. Yeah. But is this is this the first step they would take is show us your arms? Kind of. Holy I'm, shit, man. It was oh, it, I can't believe that. Back then in the 80s, drug use, you know, people smoked marijuana, oh, but when they got onto other stuff, they got onto other like, stuff. They got it. They got onto hard stuff. That yeah. I was my jaw hit the floor. That was the first yeah. step they did. They sat on the bed and they're like, "Hey, Hey, show us your arms. I was like, wait, w- what? And then she's like, should we check between the toes? I mean, it was, it was intense. It was intense. And it, this would have made more sense back then and been more like, oh, yeah, I, okay. I, Listen, I'll believe you. If this was made in the 90s, all they're doing is checking his pupils. You know, just like, oh, you dilated? Oh, you look high as a kite. That's that is exactly no, no, what they no. would have done. Back in the eighties, we're checking for track marks. Check between your toes, baby. He's hiding those needle marks. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, then he zaps them. Then they're like, "Are you a junkie?" And he zaps the door on mom. And then he looks She's, over. She what? gets so mad. She bursts back in. How dare you? <laughs> He's all like, "I'm over here. It wasn't me. It must be." I the haven't wind. moved, ma. You idiot. And he looks over at his his ventriloquist doll. Um, that's another thing about this movie is this this room is not set up like a kid's room should be in an eighties movie. No, there's just or nothing any in it. movie it's ever. Like, <laughs> maybe like a globe and like you know an old yeah. shoe. Or uh, uh, did you guys have those uh, lights that melted lava over the lava lamp? Was that the eighties? I feel like that was the eighties. Right? Started, started in the seventies. Started in the seventies, but uh, oh, I'm way off. Okay. It would have would have hung out into the eighties. Yeah, you could put I a lava, lava lamp, lamp in there in high school. That's all I'm saying. It was yeah. dope. They could have tricked out this room a little more, but they did not. They could have made it like a cool place to hang out, you yeah. know. But he looks over at his ventriloquist doll, and you're like, "Well, that that doll is going to be floating around the room and doing things <laughs> at some point." <laughs> and it does. They pay it off. Look at them. They're doing great. The next day, walking through campus, Bernadette's doing the interview. Barney, what do you want to do with your life? He's like, I want to study botany. Um, and they get research. The- research yeah. botany. I don't know. So I he makes a point of saying that, and I didn't realize there were multiple things you could do in a botany field, which is on me, I guess. But you know, apparently, he felt he needed to clarify that it was the research portion. If that means you, anything to you, there you, you go. You really did watch this movie a little too I hard, did. Johnny. I, <laughs> I rewound some parts of this movie. Like, I got into this one. This one was fun. Um, Heather Thomas has to copy her homework off of somebody, off of yeah, maybe I Bernadette, I think. So, the person behind her. I don't know. She turns around and asks. I don't know. For some reason, the principal is there. They're doing their um, I... poetry <laughs> presentations. Yeah. And she's so the teacher's like, we have a special guest. It's your principal. He's just going to sit and audit the class, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. And it and he doesn't really play any role in anything. She either. doesn't do anything other than she lands on top of him during the map fiasco, and oh, yeah. uh, you know, and then we get two boners in class. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. so the first of the poetry people is Gary Cooter, the punk rock guy. Do you know who Wait, this is, Tony? Hold on, is his name really Gary Cooter? That is. Does what they she said. say that in that the movie? And I missed what, it. That is what I they missed say. her saying Cooter. Oh, I gotta That's watch Cooter. this movie again. That's incredible. Um, no, I do. I know who this is. This guy was yeah. one of the stars of Square Pegs. Do you know Square Which, Pegs? I sure don't. Square what Pegs. Is Square Pegs is one of these really early teen nerd comedy sitcoms, which starred uh, Matthew Broderick's wife, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Wait, all right, I'm gonna look this up. Yeah, so Sarah Jessica partner part. Parker and this other girl, and then there were two boys, and they were all the nerds. And this guy was super cool, and um, 
unfortunately did not survive the AIDS uh, crisis, which is like oh, no. super sad because this, this kid oh. was, this kid was fantastic. And he was wonderful on the show. His name was Johnny something or other. And he always like, you know, did, did a thing with his glasses. Sure. Very cool. Seminal show. Square pegs was kind of the same show as, um, uh, what was the Linda Cardinale show? Um, all the with the three nerdy kids, uh, with the uh, what's his name who did all freaks the and comics. geeks. Sorry, freaks and geeks. Freaks and geeks. Yeah, yeah. Freaks sorry. and geeks is pretty much just a rip off of Squarepix. It's pretty much oh, the same. Well, show. freaks and geeks is great. So yeah. okay, yeah, I'll so, have to watch it. All so right. Squarepix basically sort of set up that sort of you know, which was different than the Welcome Back Cotter, which was more of a more of an urban thing, sort of. <laughs> okay poetry well, that's he a does, bummer. All right. he does yeah so super bummer so yeah i was like oh man i'm bummed now he does his uh poem chicks while barney has a heather fantasy in the sort of the middle of it yeah yeah and gives himself a boner gives himself a boner and then after the poem's over the teacher's like Barney, stand up. And he's well, like, she oh. asked him what he thought of the poem. And yeah. he's like, he wasn't paying attention because he's thinking about uh, Little Miss Pink over there. Right. And then he, he takes something from his desk. I don't know if it was, was it a shirt or like, like something? A, like a windbreaker or something. Yeah. And he uh, slides it over his, his dick. And I was like, yep, we've all been there, buddy. I get it. I get it. I don't know. I, Never mind. I won't tell you about my life. Uh, but oh, it's you gotta tell funny. us the story, Tony. Oh no, it's not really a story. I was just gonna say, I you know, you you tuck it into your waistband, and then nobody knows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was the move. That was the move because you you can't you don't have control over that stuff at that no, age. Okay, no. so you just have to figure out how how am I gonna get to my next class, Dan? I can't walk through the hallways like this. So you just. Tuck it up. Anyhow, so she's like, are you hiding something? <laughs> and I was, it's too on the nose, but I yeah. did laugh pretty hard. So to avoid standing up, he zaps the map down. The map falls on her. She falls on the principal, and everybody laughs, and comedy ensues. It wasn't uh, funny. No. That part lost me, that, uh, was, but that's it, fine. You're going to have to tell me when something in this thing movie did actually I just make told you, laugh. you I just told you when he covers his boner that gave me oh, a good okay. chuckle but because you know sense memory or something like that so uh outside uh Willie Ames hitting on Jane uh her her boyfriend shows up and this is the first time that he uses telekinesis because and he zaps her sweater open boing so uh, uh. I mean, I, we don't have to hit this too hard throughout the day. It's weird that 90% of what he does with telekinesis is just try to look at boobies. It's yeah. pretty weird that that's the one. Th it, all right. That's it. I just it's it's awkward. So everyone strap in. OK, because it's <laughs> it's a weird movie from here on out. So the boyfriend tries to get her to the car. It happens again. And she's like, I can't stop it. And what does he do? What does the boyfriend do? Gets mad at her. He gets mad at her. And he goes, what are you, some sort of pervert? And I was like, guy, your hot girlfriend is taking her top off. What are you getting mad about? Like, if that's what you think it is, why are you mad about it, bro? <sighs> Who knows? Uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a real bitch. That's all I know. I think she says it was the wind. She said it's the wind. Here's the thing. She knows it's not the wind, right? So what is she, why is she, I don't understand why she's trying to cover it up. She should be confused. She should be like, why is my shirt popping open over and over? That makes no sense. She actually has the hardest time in this movie because she's not evil, but she's not good and she's not. And she's just harassed for the next 90 minutes. Yeah, but she kind of does, does, you know, she sort of, she does cheat with, with Willie Ames' character and then says, I'm not going to tell my boyfriend and I'm still, I'm just with him to get a trip to the Hawaii. Yeah. There's a lot of like, she just sort and of. And then she tells him that she faked it. I, 
I don't understand her character at all. <laughs> no, I'll tell her, you that. Her but character they makes don't no make sense. her evil enough that I don't no. feel bad for her. Yeah. And that's that's a problem. You kind of wish she actually had a little more character that she could actually play. Because I, I don't know that her acting was necessarily that terrible. It's just no, she had no, no direction to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Much like most of this movie. So Barney gets back to the lab. It's a mess. So he, he does the Sorcerer's Apprentice with the broom and the thing. and uh, Yeah, and that, that had come out already, right? I don't. Fantasia's been out for years, right? Uh, since about 1939. Okay, great. I don't know when it was released, Dan. I was dead. Okay. Actually, I think it was 1940. Fantasia. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know anything, guy. <laughs> uh, boom. Uh, Bernadette's looking in the window and sees this happening through the window. We we have a reoccurring thing where this window to the lab, <laughs> people just will be walking by and then they'll say, I should probably stop here. Walk it's over to that very window and popular. peep in the window. <laughs> it is, it is, I've never seen a movie motivate the action through the peeping through this one specific window. And it's not a window that people would peep through. It's the science lab. Nothing exciting happens in the science lab. I'm sorry. Nope. But everyone's curious. Everyone loves this science lab. They're like, what's going on in there? So Bernadette sees, Willie Ames sees Bernadette seeing. She goes in um, Mm -hmm. through the open door. The door is not locked, although most of the rest of the movie, the door is always locked. locked. Yeah, which is why he was confused. He said, how did you get in here? And she explained to him that the door was open. And then... He breaks her glasses? Does he use the telekinesis to yeah. break her glasses? Yeah, which is very dangerous, by the way. Listen, people out there, if you get telekinesis powers, don't shatter someone's glasses two inches from their eyeballs. All right? He's lucky she's not blind. Well, yeah, I mean, because they were glass back then. Nowadays, they're all plastic, so. Is that true? Miss- glasses? Yeah, all glasses are plastic. Listen, I don't have glasses. Yeah. I need glasses. Don't have glasses. So I, I don't that's, know. that's why they're light as a feather. Yeah, stiff as have. a board. Remember that game? Light as a feather, stiff as a board. The crap. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So, you ever do a Ouija board, Dan? No, Tell me, talk to me. No, never. You never do done that. a Ouija board? I mean, I know what they are and I know how they But you've well, never done one? No. We should do a Luigi board. Do you believe in ghosts? We should do a Luigi board? I'll do a we Luigi board. We should do the Luigi board. I love a Luigi board. <sighs> We're never getting through this movie. You love this movie so much. I, I had a great time yesterday, Dan. I had a real fun time with this movie. Eight pages of notes, baby. I'm not reading them at all, by the way. So I, I think I think uh, Bernadette finds the weed. Yes, she yeah. does. So so she's basically clued in on everything. And we're like, pretty oh. quickly. she's basically a sleuth. Yeah. And we're like, oh, she's sort of falling in love with Barney. Um, I found her very attractive and very hot in this movie. Oh yeah, that's a given. Okay. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. They, I think, I feel like they did the thing where they're like, we're gonna dress her down, uh, so she's less attractive, but she's she's attractive. Yeah, she's very attractive, and just she comes across really cares, you know, like this, like yep. this really nice, car- casual charisma. She's um, probably the really most nice. likable person in this movie. Oh, by far. Yeah, 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 yeah by far. Well, the secretary's up there. You know what I'm saying? Sec- you mean the guidance counselor lady? The secretary. Or, you mean Mrs. Bernhard? <laughs> Mrs. Bernhard? That- Great joke. That was a good joke, too. You remember that one, Dan? No, I don't. <laughs> so you mean the, the one that Willie Ames already had sex with? That is correct. Yeah, I, and, think she and, was a, know, I think she was the guidance counselor. Was she a secretary? Oh, okay. I have I no know. idea. Maybe. I don't know. Who, I don't know what people yeah. do in this movie. No. They're all the same age. What does it matter? So we're like, okay, here's what's going to happen. Bernadette's going to be in love with Barney. Barney's going to be yep. in love with with Jane, and then <laughs> you would think, and then that's going to be the 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 crux of the the, the crux the, of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, yeah. through the whole movie, Bernadette and Barney just just sort of fall in love. And just have just, like a nice relationship with very little trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's great. They have, Smooth little, sailing. they have one little issue, but it's not an issue that gets, you know. We're going to talk about that issue, though. 
he just goes and says sorry, and then she takes it back. Yeah. And it was absolutely he a says, thing. don't be mad at me, Dan. That's yeah. what he says. I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. Go to prom with me. Okay. And that, and that but see, that was the thing when it does happen. She would have said, you know, she would have gone to prom with him. That's why it's kind yeah. of, I actually kind of like yeah, that. For sure. It, yeah, was definitely. Like it, it wasn't overblown. It was like an actual thing that would happen in your life. You know, this is a crazy thing to say. This movie is more like real life. <laughs> That's why it's not really a movie. <laughs> That's kind of why it's not really a movie. Yeah. Yep. For a movie I, about telekinesis, it's it's weirdly grounded. <laughs> It is, it is uh, kind of a weirdly grounded movie. And so yeah, you, you don't really hate it because it's just kind of like, okay, these people are sort of living their lives. Nobody's that terrible. Well, he's pretty terrible at the end. Oh, yeah. The end thing just was. It's bizarre. It doesn't. It, it's bizarre. It doesn't even fit with most of them. Well, some of it. We'll get, keep going. Keep going. Okay. I'm too excited. Dan. Uh, he's at home. Where were you? You forgot your milk. He zaps the dad's prune juice for some reason. Oh, he gets grounded, so he zaps the dad's prune juice so he can escape, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, no. He's, so Dan, yeah. I, I have a question because he yeah. zaps the prune juice yeah. and everyone's like looking around and then he apologizes. He says, I'm sorry, dad. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Nobody, that's nobody. the other thing. Is nobody ever makes the connection that he's doing the same thing. He's doing it. Like, no. But he apologized for it. And then yes. the mom was like, you should be sorry. Now go to your room. And it's like, wait, what do you think he's sorry for? Because he's sorry for making that drink explode in his dad's face. What? Did, I don't understand what's happening. If I looked at Tony like this. I mean, it's. And then his headphones popped off. You'd be like, you just did that. I'd be like, oh, shit, Dan, what are you doing? Why are you messing with me? Also, impressive range <laughs> that you could do it through the computer screen. Wow. Wow. We. Wow. So he goes up to his room and then he's like bored. So he zaps his his sort of weird Millennium Falcon slash Enterprise and yeah. it flies around the room and then it flies through through the fish tank. Yep. So this is we need out to talk. the fish tank. <laughs> we need to talk about the science of this, Dan. When did he start to be able to change the molecular makeup of objects? I don't understand what just happened. He went from making things fly to just <laughs> changing this. I, what's happening? And then he never does it again. It's a one-time thing, but they think it's the same? I don't understand. And then he has like a fantasy about the sh crew on the ship. <laughs> it's so crazy. And then the dog bites the ship. Oh, uh, you are you not laughing hysterically during this? I it's was just in really, tears, Dan. Really, I mean, it's the truth the of the matter, thing. you know, the truth of the matter is he's probably created something that he is completely high, like on marijuana, and then he probably emits that and, and is it's sort of a shared psychotic sure. uh sure. <laughs> marijuana high that he shares yeah, with everyone okay. that he goes around to as opposed to actually telekinesis and things. So that's incredible, Dan. Anything can I, happen. I like that theory. I think that's really interesting. Oh my god, we're never getting through this movie. Um We're cruising. What are you talking about? Uh, he puts the ventriloquist doll on the bed, and then... And you, are you going to tell me that that's really going to work? Your parents know you have the dummy. And then if it's not in the chair that it's always sitting in, she's going to know. That's a dumb move. Um, he zaps the mirror and scares mom with the doll, and then she hides, you know, holding <laughs> her, her cross. Well, I mean, listen, he makes the doll fly at her across the room and grab her ankles. Yeah, you'd be pretty freaked out, Dan. So Bernadette wants to test him. Uh, Peyton wants him to affect the baseball game. And then... Yep. Which he does. And which... Oh, then we have, we have the baseball game. And he does a bunch of zapping. And then eventually has to come in there to do the final hit. And then he okay. zaps it, and he makes the slow the, down the seventy-five-year-old pitcher on the other team. Yeah, crop. I mean, this guy is so old, and he's so weird. And when he sits down and cries on the mound, oh boy, that's some rich stuff. I mean, this <laughs> oh, whew, this is wild, man. But so here's, what is, 
What do you want to say? Here's what I want. I want to say two things. One, Scott Bayo never played baseball in his life. He's never thrown a ball. He's oh. never swung a bat and he's never ran before. Those are the three things that I've seen because he barely looks like a human. <clears throat> when he gets to the plate, he's, his hands are like spread apart. His bat's half cocked, and then he just sh- moves his body to swing. It doesn't. That's, that's <laughs> Maybe called, he's making that's, a choice. That's called acting, know. Tony. He's, he's, you think he, so? Yeah, he's not. That's why they don't normally let him play. I, okay. I mean, it's it's pretty bad. Is all I'm going to say. But here's okay. Back to the movie plot, real quickly. Yeah. Bernadette laughing the whole time. She's loving it. He's cheating the pants out of these people, and yeah. she thinks it's hilarious. Yeah, that's a that's a doesn't st- really match up with where she goes. They don't really, you know, Bernadette. Once again, Bernadette's not as as terrible as Jane slash Heather Thomas, but right, she pretty right. much doesn't. You know, at times they're like, "Do this," and she's like, "Okay, I guess." Right, like the characters. <laughs> it's not. Obviously, saying the character is inconsistent in this movie is uh, stupid. I understand that. Yeah. But it bothered me uh, from sure. here to where she goes a little bit later. Yeah. That's all. Uh, the principal can't get in the lab. Okay. Only Barney has the key. Fine. Which is pretty weird, right? Very, the key. Very, the very child weird. has the key to the to the science room? Although that's not that strange, you know. Back but then, the only were weird key schools. he could have a key, but where's the janitor? The janitor should have keys. Every who's cleaning the science lab, Dan? No one. Hopefully, he is with the with the search that's of the point. Yeah, he's yeah. doing it with his mind. Um. Let's see. So Mrs. Bernhardt sees the pot through the window in the lab, goes and gets the principal. But they've figured out that he's she saw, and so then they clean it out there. So when the principal shows up, the pot is gone, yeah. and then they take the weed down to the furnace and burn it in the furnace, where they get not caught but found out by the coach. And coach so, just thinks they're having sex because it's hot down it's, there and they're covered in sweat. It's a running thing through the movie. The coach shows up after something's happened, and then he just assumes that whoever was there was having sex. And I like the running bit. It's funny. It's pretty funny. And he's like, hey, next time, bring her somewhere nice. That was a good that was a good line. Talking about that was a good line. That was a good line. Oh, it's it's pretty good. So he opens the furnace and gets pot smoke in the face. Uh, do you want to talk about the fantasy he has while You're he's damn high? right I do, Dan. This is the best part of the whole movie. I had a this feeling you is, were going to say something like that. It's, it's so good. So he gets shot with a, a bunch of a bunch of pot, which I mean, listen, I've never I've never smoked marijuana, but do you hallucinate? I don't I don't know. I don't know how it works. Because people of, drive when they're high, right? That feels dangerous. Then, if you're that seems like a terrible idea. Okay, uh, <laughs> I I had cannabis one time. Whoa, Dan Goodsell, Rebel. and it was terrible. It's literally oh, no. the worst thing that could happen to you. It messes <laughs> with your time sense, and you like you kind of like it's almost like not it's like nodding off. And you wake up and you're like, wait, what just happened? You not happened? <laughs> so you kind of keep resetting. I, it's horrible. I, Dan, I think maybe you didn't have the best experience because I think some people really enjoy it. I think no. maybe you should microdose. Try microdosing. That's a thing that people say, oh. right? No, I'm not, not trying. It was terrible. <laughs> Anyhow, back to this great film. So he goes into a drug induced coma, essentially, and no. he's dreaming. He goes to the science lab. And he's like, hey, Barney, what's up, man? And then Einstein is there. Yeah. And Einstein's like, oh, he works for me now. And then they go biking. Why did they go biking? Do you remember? There was no reason why anything happened. Okay. In this all right. So then all did of not a sudden. Say, did not say why. Einstein and the coach are going on a bike ride. Yep. And then his, his wife is coming up behind him with some sort of bazooka rocket launcher. And yep. he's like, we got to go. And then she starts shooting salami rockets. Yes. <laughs> and the guys, as they ride their 
But no, no, no. Then Einstein disappears, and it's just I, him. Yeah, it's just him. Einstein leaves him. I don't know. He's probably got abandonment issues. So I'm not totally sure. I mean, Dan, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's so baffling. I, if you just, I'm sure you can find this on YouTube. Just watch the dream sequence. It's wonderful. So then they Ooh. go to an amusement park called Magic Land, which is actually just Magic Mountain. They go oh, on. Yep. They go on Colossus. They use the telekinesis. Wow, is that a real? Is that the real ride? I've never been yeah. to Magic Mountain. Yeah, Colossus Should, is. Is that big, still uh, there? I believe Colossus is still going. Yeah, because it looked real fun on it's the movie. A, I was like, I want to ride that. It is a huge wooden roller coaster. Have you not gone? Yeah, it's, yeah. I w- it's um. I don't know the answer to that. To be honest, we keep every summer we feel we're like we should make a trip because I love roller. Co- I haven't been on a roller coaster in ten years. I might not be able to handle it still, which would crush me in turn. Like my soul would be gone. But I love roller coasters. Must be a thing you really love if you haven't done it in ten years. Dan, <laughs> I, listen, I'm old and I'm busy. I don't have time for things I love anymore. All right. Are you really busy, Tony? I mean, at this at this juncture, I'm as the least busy I've ever been in my life, and it's terrifying. So they uh, win win stuffed animals with the throw the quarter game. What is that game? I don't understand. Are you just trying to land it on the plate? Yeah. Okay. I've yeah. Sorry. I just, have you never one, been to a carnival? I've been to a ton, and I love these games, but I've never done a quarter throw. The one that we do is like the the bottles, and then you try to loop the little red discs on the bottles. Sure. That's, a, that's the only one I've done that's similar to this. Okay. Yeah. You know what, Dan? I don't like this attitude that you have, okay? Let's take it down a notch. You, you haven't lived your life, Tony. That's like something I, like me. You know me. what? You are not wrong. I I haven't even tried cannabis like you have. I'm a big pothead. Did it once. <laughs> Next time we see you, you're gonna have one of those green hats with the uh, with the cross on. Uh, you know, it's gonna be great. Gonna have J- Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica. That's me. <laughs> um, okay, so we set up that the the uh, Jane's boyfriend and Peyton go out to the parking lot and get drunk. Then they come back in and. Yeah. They're like first one to puke loses hundred dollars. They Which put is him, totally something that we w- boys would do. Uh, you know, it's they, great. They put him on the barrels of fun, and then they zap it, and so the boyfriend loses, and he's like, "I'll pay you later." And then he leaves, and then he bounces, and they make fun of him for leaving. I I don't know. Well, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. What are you going to do? But what I will say is, when he throws up. He like he's walking back behind one of the tents, I guess you you would say one of the setups. But he walks right by a garbage can, and then keeps going, and then throws up in the lawn. I was like, "What the fuck, dude? Have a little respect for the carnival grounds." So a couple other college guys come up and start hitting on Jane, and then we do a whole "you talking to me," and then we have a. Big he does that twice fight? in this movie. Did they think it was funny? Oh, did did they do it twice? Did, it, did Taxi Driver just come out? I think Taxi Driver came out in seventy nine. Okay, so it, I mean it's not too far away, but they did. He did it to himself in the mirror in his room. That's oh, when he, he cracked did. the mirror. He did. He's like, he? "You talking to me?" And they cracks the mirror. I don't, so I, I don't know. They thought that that was really cool to do. He did it twice. Oh, 70, 76 for Taxi Driver. So it's been a while. yeah, that's too long. I feel like that's too far for it to still be that relevant. Whatever. No, 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 no. Still very relevant. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess we still do it now. I guess yeah. I'm walking in. You know, like those types of things stick with you. I guess. What you talking about? What's the matter for you? <laughs> Pizza <Something> pie. <laughs> Uh, and then it's you want to talk about the pie. his big fight with the with the college guys, the uh, T Week guys. I do, and here's and here's why, Dan. If uh, there's a lot of people around, right? If you see two scrawny guys pick yeah. up larger guys and throw them twenty to twenty five yards across the yard, something's yeah. going on. Nobody says anything. Everyone's happy. Everyone kind of claps. No. No, that's that is not normal, and nobody reacts as if it's not normal, and I, that bothers me. I hate it. Nobody also, reacts. He makes to... one guy. Nobody reacts oh, to anything him punch, in this. Makes him punch he makes him punch himself in the face, which is funny. But the velocity that he'd have is not nearly enough to knock him as far as he did. But it's fine. 
Um, yeah, I just know everyone that watches these things happen react as if it's a normal occurrence, and it bothers me. So Peyton gets Jane to go back to his sex den. How, how did he do that? <laughs> Why did she go there? Um, I have no idea. I really don't. I, I I know why she stays. I don't know why she goes. He's like, I respect you. He puts on classical music. And then he does a bunch of brags about how he's going to work for his dad and make a lot of money. And, and then she, he says she's, salary and her panties drop, which is ridiculous. Now, for some reason, Tony, when he transferred this movie for us to watch, he stopped oh, it right, right here. I, I think there was a scratch on, but it, it played fine for me on my DVD player. But oh, you so, miss, so you there miss like a minute. There wasn't any nudity, or was there any nudity in this? There's part no or? nudity. There's oh, okay. no nudity. Where did you see the picture being taken? No, I don't think so. Okay, so I feel like black. what you missed. Yeah. So he turns off the lights and oh, he sets okay. up his flash, and then turns off the lights, and they kind of start kissing, and then there's a flash. She's not nude, by the way, when the flash happens, but somehow she's nude in the picture. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but then she's like, hey, what was that flash? What was it? And he gaslights her and he's like, must be in your head. Some dark shit, man. Nice. He's taking pictures without her knowledge and then just tells her she's crazy. Woo, that's messed up. That is the move. That is messed up. But there's no, yeah, there's nothing fun here. Then it just cuts and we're in the next scene. Next scene, uh, Bernadette and Barney's romance continues. They're at the hot dog stand. They talk about crushes. And then they're like, oh, let's mess around. And then we have a montage of them playing tennis, of Barney I, taking control of an airplane and terrorizing a person who's trying to control right, the which airplane. Is, which is also messed up. Uh, he makes it chase him. Dan, when they're at the diner or the hot dog stand. Hot dog stand. And she's like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I don't know. We could go do something or mess around, whatever you want to do. And she's like, yeah, well, we could mess around. Doesn't that mean sex sex stuff? I would think so. But they had all these other montage scenes but they yeah, wanted to put in there. So that he's like, let's, just, let's do that first. I, th- I thought they were agreeing to go you know, Netflix <laughs> and chill. But in the 80s. But instead, they go do like nine different fun activities. <laughs> like, well, what's happening right now? You'd probably want to put the tennis and then the park, then the hot dog stand, then the let's mess around. Yeah, of course, that's the that's, order that you would do. It. it should do. <laughs> but, you know, the editor was like bored that day. He's like, eh, you'll take what I I'm give gonna, you. I'm going to mess it up. Oh, and then it's good stuff. They're, they're sitting and then he tries to kiss her and she pushes him off and then she jumps in. I'm like, okay. I guess that makes sense, because then we go, and where do they choose to have sex, Tony? In the science lab, because we only have three sets in this movie. <laughs> we got to come back to one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, this is uh, this is not a great scene, Dan. And let me explain to you what happens here. He uh, levit- he telekinesis uh, the, the bed onto the, the lab table. Then he beep, lifts beep, her beep, up. Beep, 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 which she's enjoying. <laughs> he lifted up. Yeah, she does seem to be having a good time. <laughs> but then they're kissing and yeah. they're getting they're getting a little handsy. And he goes to go up her shirt. Okay. Oh, really? I didn't see this. Okay. And she pushes his hand away oh, and shakes okay. her head. It's oh, all really? the music, so you don't hear anything. But then he does his telekinesis and looks at it and starts bringing the shirt up and she grabs it and holds it down. I was like, what is happening? He's trying to force her with his mind powers. But then she just does it anyhow. I So I guess maybe I didn't understand the situation, but it seemed not good. And then we cut. I mean, they kiss a lot. There's a lot of kissing. Kissing. It is the least sexy kissing I've ever seen in my life, by the way. It's like open mouth pecking like this and then he like kisses her neck and then pecks at her face and then kisses her shoulder and then pecks at her face i don't know what's going on but there's no way she's enjoying it sorry (laughs) and then we cut and then they're smoking (laughs) they're having their victory cigarette which is uh it's pretty funny 
I did Pretty not fun. see that coming. I did not see the, the smoking coming. <laughs> it's, it's a great cut because you're like mid heavy action, and then all of a sudden it's just two people smoking. <sighs> it's good. It's a good joke. So the next day, uh, Jane's boyfriend comes to pay off Peyton a hundred dollars, and he's all like. We're having casino night at the frat house, and we've got a roulette wheel, so you should come and make some more money. Yep, 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 yep. And he's like, yeah. Oh, I don't know if I should do it. Oh, I guess we'll go. He's he's slow playing him, and I like it. I appreciate it. Uh, The principal puts an ad and has a date coming up. Yeah. What? (laughs) This can, you know, I'm not from the 80s, but is this how they did like online dating back then? You put an ad in the paper? Yeah. Like a personal were... ad in the paper looking for a woman? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is a thing? Yeah, they're probably like little little free newspapers Man. of people looking for people, okay. probably. Yeah, all kinds of weird wow. stuff like that. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay, cool, man. All right, the 80s were a great time, huh? You know, send a send a thing to PO Box four seven eight nine six. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm in love. What a, what a good way to get murdered. Haven't I believe. You, haven't you ever seen the the shop around the corner, which is what uh, that Tom Hanks Meg Ryan movie? The shop you've hey got mail? around the corner. Yeah, you've got mail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there based, you go. You're right. Based yeah, on a right. movie called The Shop Around the Corner, where they corresponded via the mail, even though they worked at the same place, oh. and then they went on a date, and they, he found out that it was her, and then he was like, oh. Well, that's what they do in this movie. Yeah. Which one came first, do you think? Uh, well, Shop Probably Around the, the Corner came out in the 40s, so I'm assuming yeah, so, that was before this. So, you know, it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. <laughs> they star, toss-up. starred Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart mostly dead at the point that this oh. movie came out. Oh, Great, great. Yeah, that was Tony my, did uh, an impression. Yes. He's yeah. not, you're not terrible at everything. Well, it wasn't great. I mean, but you knew who it was. You what know was what that? I mean? What was the, I was doing a, I was doing a impression the other day. It's <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was a good story. <laughs> I was doing an impression the other day. I'm not going to tell you what it was or how I did it. Well, I, was I, doing, did it. I was doing one of a British comedian, Goose Khan. I don't Bro- even know who that is. Bruv. No, I can't bruv. Oh, I hate when they say bruv. bruv? I'm so jealous. Go oh, bruv. Um, okay. <laughs> um, boom, Peyton uh, shows up. He's got a car. Yeah, well, he's rich, right? He keeps telling everyone he's rich or pre-rich or whatever he said. I, you, so why are all of his schemes about getting money? Don't you think if he had a car, we'd have seen this car before? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, well, a ton of time. You would have seen it a bunch. But no, nah, never, never. Like if you're writing a character into a movie and he has a car, you got to see that car a few times. Yeah. It's a car. <laughs> no, nah, you're overthinking it, Dan. <laughs> this is a serious cultural cachet of having a car. Um, he only needs it when he needs it, okay? So he's like, frat party, let's go. Barney's like, no, I got a date. And then he's like, and then Bernadette shows up and then He's like, oh, I don't know what to do. And she's like, you shouldn't go. You shouldn't use your power for evil. And then she's like, you're becoming Peyton's clone. Which I don't even understand what that means. Because then, he's got telekinesis <laughs> powers, baby. Peyton wishes he had them. And he, she rides off and then he stops her bike. <laughs> so her bike is frozen. Which is scary. This is this is like really uh, like I, assault. Like I, this is scary stuff. I thought he was gonna knock her over. Cause it seems that way, and she's like, let me go, Barney, let me go. Terrifying scene. This is they play it for comedy, <laughs> but this is intense stuff. This is where this would really go, you know. Where did you get those bruises? He telekinesis the mind. Right, you can't prove you can't prove that it's my hand. It won't match up because I do it with my mind. Oh boy! <laughs> so, um, boom! We get to see the principal's blind date. He uh, ended up with the the, the teacher, Mrs. Bernhardt, and then they have sex under the table to disgusted uh, views of the waiter and everyone. But everyone, everyone else. he lets it happen. It's so weird. The, the the waiter is at the table while she's underneath giving him a beeger. What's what's the waiter supposed to do? Tell them to stop. 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 <laughs> stop. Be like, hey, you're in public. Maybe put your clothes on. Yeah, roll, animals. Roll, roll up a newspaper and hit him on the <laughs> nose. Swat him. No. 
<laughs> so we're just like, oh, please, please let this this thread be over soon. And almost. which it is, it is almost. You know, it's uh, good. they go to the casino, they win, and then. They well, get they, angry and destroy the whole place. Well, hold on, Dan. That's not what happens exactly. The, the, the frat has rigged the roulette table so that it shoots out a second marble? No. What How it is, does it work? You have like a magnet in the wheel and so that it goes okay. to the spot you want. So that to he's triggering the magnet with his pinball button. <laughs> okay. Okay. It was very confusing to me. I didn't understand uh how this cheating at roulette works well because it's just arbitrary you just know that he pushes the button and that means you lose you know what else is arbitrary is What's scott that? bayo deciding he no longer wants to do it for no reason out of the blue yeah he's like we all made a bunch sudden, of money now we're right. stopping all of a sudden he's mad at peyton he's like you can't make me do it i'm not gonna do it and then he blows up the place and then leaves and i, I don't know when this happened when did he get mad he was he, on board the whole time. Just finally what Bernadette say, said sunk in finally. I can't wait to talk about that life lesson at the end here. And so what, what happens to him after this dark moment? I don't know. What happened to him? Any, nothing. He takes to the bottle. Oh, that's right. In probably oh, yeah. the weirdest thing in the whole movie. That's right. He just goes back to the science room and then gets drunk and then wakes up the next day. Nothing even happens. He no, just, well, he's he gets, just depressed. He gets, no, he gets drunk and then he's wandering the campus drunk and Bernadette, yeah, he sees yeah. Bernadette and he's like, got his collar messed up. Yeah, it's all messed up because he slept at the school, man. Then he's like, can we talk? I'm sorry about the gambling. I was an idiot. We have fun together. Let's go to prom. And then she's like, yeah, okay. See you there. So here's my problem yeah. with the movie as a whole, Dan. Okay. Bernadette gets mad at him for cheating at gambling. A little bit. But not cheating at sports, right? No. But more more to the point, she doesn't get mad when he uses his power to undress other women against their will. Only when he cheats at gambling. You know, there was one point at which I think she's bisexual. I mean, that's fine. You still don't want to undress people without them with their consent. It's still weird, but she loves it. She's la at the end scene when he's ripping clothes off of all every girl he can see. She's loving it. She's laughing. And I was like, no, girl, that's not okay. I think that was a directorial choice and not an actor's choice. Oh, I'm not. I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying as a movie, I don't like those decisions. It doesn't make sense. So he's getting ready for prom, puts on his thing, right. and what is what is the mom yeah. done? What is the mom? What, 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 what happens? Well, she gets a couple of the local priests over, and they're trying to do an exorcism. It's really good stuff. See, now, that's the thing about this movie, is there's a great movie called, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, the, the $2 one with the kid trying to, uh, uh, better off sure. dead. Two, oh. Oh, there's, yeah, there's Cusack, better off yeah. dead Kuzak, and then mm. there's also the Kuzak one where they have the boat and they have to get in the race to save something. Did you oh, ever boy. see that one? It's another. Kuzak. I don't. I don't know if Same I did. Same time period. Those movies are great because they yeah. have all these little, these little scenes that happen. You know, in Better Off Dead, we have the ski scenes with what's his name, the. Uh, you know the guy. Yeah, the guy. You know the guy. You know the guy, <laughs> <laughs> you know the guy in Better Off Dead. Uh, what's his name? He's really funny. He's like kind of a weird. He he plays snot on uh, American Dad. American Dad. That's where you went. Oh boy, Dan, we're in trouble now. I got I got nothing. <laughs> oh, what's that? I gotta find look his him name. Up. Gotta find his yeah, name. Yeah, look him up. I bet his name is um, uh, Benedict. Salinger. Oops. Daryl Oates. Uh, Daryl Oates. What are you talking about? I'm just naming names. Here he is. I, I got to get. I get him. Curtis oh. Armstrong. Curtis Armstrong. You know him. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I do. do I you know do. Who that is? He's yeah. in. Yeah, he's in Supernatural, Dan. That's where you should have gone. 
He plays Metatron in Supernatural. Uh, no, he's in uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge of the Nerds. That's where, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Why was I talking about him? Oh, and just they have all these bits with with real real active comedians in these movies that you're just like right. You, I, yes, if you're like think of you know a comedy movie in the eighties that you liked and things that happened. It's like I think about Better Off Dead. I'm like you know they have the two dollars kid people still making still making the jokes. These jokes yep. are yep. so quintessential that people still yeah. making them. People will walk up to go two dollars and half the people in the room will know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, just like, like this movie. No, nothing. Just like Zapped. <laughs> nothing in the in the Scott Bale versus the Exorcists. No one remembers any of those things when he zaps what the I dummy do and remember. it's flying down the stairs. It's it's funny. What I remember but it is they mean say, anything. "Get the what is it called when you knock someone out with medicine? Shoot, tranquilizers." They say, "Get the tranquilizers," and he gets a handful of pills and. Sh- Shoves him into the kid's mouth. He's killing the. He's killing Scott Bain. Kill, that, killing the that kid. Is, you are going to OD so quickly. So here uh, we are. Yeah, I don't know. It's here ridiculous. we are. Prom. Peyton has two girls, two very attractive girls who are like both happy to be on his arm. Okay. Yeah. Bernadette and he has, doesn't really care. Bernadette has to reveal the prom court, which is Jane and Peyton. Peyton gets the first dance with Jane, and he just immediately begins to grope her horribly. Just sexually <laughs> harasses her in front of everybody, and they all laugh. They just laugh. He's putting his head in her boobs. He's grabbing all sorts of body parts, and they're just laughing, having a good time. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Even, <laughs> even, is, his, even his two fairly hot dates are just like, ooh. They, <laughs> they thought it was hilarious. They were laughing. Oh, boy, dude. It's the 80s were a wild time. So Bernadette is sad, but Barney shows up. He has one of the orchids. And then we. How late is he, Dan? Because I, when we did our King and Queen, that was towards the end of the night. Well, more importantly, he was supposed to be there early to help her set up, and he That's didn't show right. up for That's that. That's what I'm saying. Like, he didn't show up for the pre. He's not even there for most of the dance. I think he's at the end of the dance he shows up. And more importantly, the, the exorcist people literally took about three minutes. Yeah, he basically walked out the door. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't slowed down a whole bunch by these priests. Yeah. So... He's like, I don't know how to dance. And then she's like, I'll lead. And then they're happy and everything's perfect. And then Peyton comes over and he's all like, I've got the airline tickets. We're going to Vegas. Oh, wait. And he's like, nah, dude. <laughs> We're not doing it. Yeah. That's and, it. And I- that's it. And he's like, oh, okay. And then See Peyton, you later. And then Peyton pulls out the naked pictures of Jane. Why did he even pull well, out the naked pictures Well, hold of on. Jane? You're, you're missing the motivation for that. So the frat brothers show up there, and they're oh, okay. like, hey, you owe us some money, basically. Yeah. Uh, and instead, this guy just uses pictures that this girl had no idea that he took of her naked and uses them as leverage. So he's oh, a he's terrible like- human being. He's like, leave me alone or I'll expose these pictures to everyone. Yeah. Like now. And she's all upset, as she should be. And then he gets upset, the boyfriend, and he's about to punch Peyton. Right? He's mad at Peyton. He's about to punch him. What happens, Dan? Scott Bayo goes crazy and starts ripping off everyone's clothes in the whole building. I mean, yeah, essentially. The first one, he's about to punch Peyton, right? What's the logical move here? Scott Bayo stops the punch. That's the logical move nope. to use telekinesis out of this situation. Rip off Jay's clothes. That's what I'm saying. Why does he... The girl that was just humiliated with yeah. naked pictures that she did not consent to, now yeah. he t- rips her clothes off to distract everybody. This poor woman is scarred for life. Got to teach her a lesson. But then, you know, he's like, I'm just going to double down. And then I'm going to tear off every woman's clothes that I see. And, and then some, a couple of guys. Pants, a couple pants. of guys. Not, Not all pants. the guys, but a couple of them. Yeah, I don't want to see any willies. But, you know, some butt cheeks are okay. And then everyone's naked. And they're running around. And I don't understand what's happening. But again, Bernadette loving it. 
She thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> what is what is going on? The Saving Grace. I don't know if you agree. The Saving Grace is a nude 18 year old, ostensibly 18 because they're at senior prom, I assume, runs by Coach, who's there with his wife, and Coach tries to grab her. He tries to grab her and tackle her to the ground, and his wife has to stop him. It is the yes, most insane thing I have ever seen in my life. This movie is crazy, Dan. And then what does Jane throw at him to uh, make him lose his powers? Was it a watermelon? What did she throw? <laughs> it was a giant long segment of watermelon, which which doesn't throw just flies like this, like it's like it's held, like doesn't somebody had it on a wire, like goes wee bang, hits just flies and it goes bark, hits him on the head, he falls down uh, and he loses his powers, but not really. Yeah, he pretends to lose his powers. Yeah. I guess so that his friend will stop using abusing him, I guess, is the oh, I guess no, that's no, what he's no. going for. I'm sorry, no. The watermelon hits him and then he just zaps even more. Including oh, yeah, the yeah, wind. He gets mad and takes off the rest of her clothes. That's what happens. It's later that's, than the, the hose hits yeah. him in the head. That's when he yeah. loses the powers. Yeah, so this is the second or third time in this movie that a girl was mean to him, and his response is take off their clothes. With my mind. That's how he gets his revenge on on women that have upset him. It's not okay. And then he did it. He did it in the car. We missed this back at the back in the day at uh, Adventureland Park, or whatever, when he's walking home. These, oh, these or after yeah. the baseball game, after that's the baseball what it is. Game, the car pulls up and these two guys moon him. And then these girls are laughing at him. And instead of doing something to the guys only, he takes off the women's tops and sees their boobs and then sends the mooners flying. He does He's got flying, real problems. He puts them in a tree. He puts them on a tree. <laughs> now, the other scene I forgot about was at some point, maybe it was when he was uh, drinking, he barfs and he projectile vomits. No, that, when was that's that? The exorcist. That's the exorcist scene when he puts the things in, they put the pills in his mouth. He's like, I got to throw up. And then the exorcist goes, that's the, that's the devil's favorite line. And then he's running to the kitchen and he vomits and directs it into the sink. It's pretty brilliant. You gotta, you gotta put a clip of that in. And you also have to put a clip of the watermelon in because those are the, those the, are water the two best. <laughs> him getting head to head with the, water, him head head with uh, the watermelon and him barfing. Those are my right, only we'll two put, last. I'll movies. put them both in. Those are your only two last. Man, I laughed a bunch. Uh, really? Not. I mean, not always at the right thing. You know, I'm not <laughs> laughing with the movie. I'm laughing at the movie. And then we have sort of a coda scene where she's all like, "Thank God your powers are gone." And then he levitates like a napkin or something, and so then, we know they're not gone. Well, and then the ending. What's the ending? They fly. They fly away, oh. Dan. They go outside, they start glowing, and then they fucking fly away. I don't even know what's going on anymore. This movie went off the rails completely in the last 10 seconds. Oh, uh, yeah. So. I don't know. This, it's, this, this movie. Is, this is wild stuff, man. It's just, yes, yeah, it's, it's very inappropriate, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is kind of, I can see how people could have a fond spot in their memories because it, yeah, was, a different, it yeah. was a different world where where you're like I mean, thank god we're not in that world right now just for the record i mean not that we're doing great right now but we're certainly uh, slightly more advanced than that that's why the now would you really call this a teenage sex comedy um well there are teenagers and there yeah. is sex yeah. Not a lot of comedy. Well, it just didn't seem like a teen sex comedy because a teen sex comedy is about horny guys trying, trying to get, to get laid. Generally, that's what it's about. Yes. And in this movie, it's horny guys who just sort of get laid just out of hand. Just fine. Don't, don't have to work at anything. Yeah, it's just fine. In fact, it's not even that his powers help him get laid. No. You know what I mean? No. He uses them in the situation, but that's that's not like the only reason that he won her. Bernadette does she was mm. in love with him from the beginning. It had nothing to do yeah. with the powers. Yeah, she was interested in him the whole time. That's why she was doing like her interview on him and yeah. 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 
So it's kind well, of like, Dan, uh, I got not, I don't know, but I don't know how else to categorize the movie. Yeah, but I mean, it, I think, and I think that's what one of the big flaws of the movie is: is that he's just kind of handed everything, and it doesn't make yeah. any sense. And then he goes full carry on everybody for no reason. It's <laughs> no very reason. weird. So, oh boy, zapped. zapped. What a classic! Now you pick this one. So that means I'm yeah. probably I normally would be picking the next one. So I get to talk about something I like this week. Uh, started Patricia Arquette's High Desert on Apple Plus. Watched Ooh. about twenty minutes of it this morning. Okay. Um, and then I walked into Shannon and I said, "I'm watching the show. It's like really good." And she's all like, "Oh yeah, I want to watch that show." So I didn't finish it. I would have finished it. Well, that was um, nice of you, Patricia Arquette, Bernadette Peters, who. I, I love her voice more than well, she's got one of my favorite voices of anybody in the world. She just like sure. so intriguing. Um, sure, she was sure, on sure. that she was on that Broadway show also, um, Smash, which I love to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that show. She was on that. She was she played the mother. She was incredible. Okay. Um, right. Bernadette Peters, uh, Matt Dillon. Yeah, yeah. Brad Garrett. Yeah. Okay. Uh, directed by uh, um, the Bengals girl's husband, Jay Roach. Do you know who Jay Roach is? I don't know if I do. Austin, do I? Austin Powers. Never heard of it. Um, he, I, I guess I didn't realize. I didn't realize. Jay yeah. Roach did the Austin Powers okay. things, and then kind of did some other stuff, which I don't remember, which didn't didn't do as well, but. You know, That's basically right. set for life because of those Austin Powers movies. Yeah, yeah he's married. Of he's married to Susanna Hoffs of the Bengals. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, but you know, because I was watching it and I was like, this this shows like there's too much there's too much going on here for like <laughs> for someone yeah. that you don't know. You're like, this is someone who who understands a lot of things. Because sure. It yeah. is not. It's not just like, a, oh, here's a sitcom or here's a thing. It's like there is a lot going on. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm, we're going to finish that today, probably. Cool. What do you got, uh, That's awesome. I'll have to give it a shot. Well, we I, I, we went and saw Guardians 3. Oh, okay. <sighs> Boy. A lot of, a lot of um, crying. You, you cried a lot. A lot of crying. I would say too much crying. Yeah. But it's also like done really well. Yeah. But I also get mad because it's, you know, all the animal cruelty stuff is like pretty hard. It's pretty heavy handed, but it's also handled pretty well. So it's hard for me to get too mad at it. But I mean, it's it's a beautiful movie. You know, okay. it's it's wonderful. Uh, that's I would say that's clearly the best, most cohesive trilogy in the MCU. Sure. You know? Um. Yeah, I mean it's good. Go see it. And then uh, Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom came out, so check that out, everybody. Are you making yeah. like like rockets and sending those poor backpack creatures I'm, out into outer space or something? I'm not good at the the item creation yet. I'm still working on it. All right, Dan, cut, check back with me in about two weeks. I think maybe I'll get my hands around it. It's fun. It's very fun though. It's a yeah, great game. Looks interesting. Yeah, it's cool. So, Tony, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing? Our special, special show that we're yeah, doing? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go off the, the the beaten path, as they say. We're gonna two paths diverge in a wood, and then we're gonna go the other way. Um, so next week, instead of doing a movie, I've convinced Dan to play a little game with me, and we're gonna do a little um a little fantasy draft movie tournament with summer blockbusters. Yeah. Um, Dan has created the rules, uh, which uh, we'll we'll discuss at the beginning of the pod next week. Yeah, but um, essentially we're going to be drafting uh, movies, head to head, head to head movies that are comparable on which movie we think is going to be disliked the most. Hate watching <laughs> tournament 2023. Yes, we're trying I'm very to excited. we're trying to match up and see what what are, what are the most hated what, what movies come out during the summer that are the most hated as per Rotten Tomatoes and the audience mm -hmm. scores. And so, you know, it's going to be a little I won't say arbitrary, but we're going to have to take into account things like uh, uh, 
review bombing and things like that. Sure, sure, so sure. Just like Peter Pan and Wendy, review bombed. Oh boy, <sighs> not review bombed. <laughs> a little bit of both, maybe, but that doesn't mean it doesn't deserve it. Just bomb. Yeah, Tony wanted to do it by box office, but a bunch of these movies are going to be like Netflix and whatnot. So oh, that's fair. That's yeah. fair point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, Dis- this will be and, good. And Disney Plus and whatnot. You know, with the, Disney the, Plus. With yeah, maybe the, a Peacock in there. I don't know. Yeah, with all the streaming, there are movies. A lot of movies that come out in other formats that are not. That's true. Not that's your, true. They're not your not your formats. So. I love it. So I'm I'm very excited. Uh, yes. We'll we'll delve more into it next week. But before we start, we'll set the ground rules, and then we're just we're gonna go for it. Go for it. Um, yeah. So we'll be back with that weird show. Might be a short show. Might be a long show. We might play some clips. We might play some trailers in there. Oh, oh. Probably, gonna have, probably gonna have to watch all the trailers for all these movies. I mean, yeah, that's 100 percent correct. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be I'm a lot. Excited, man. Actually. Because we've got about it's going to be like thirty two movies, so that's yeah. So thirty two movies be, and yeah, three minute trailers. You're going to have an, at least an hour and a half's worth of that's what I'm saying. just so on watching know, trailers. Uh, yeah, I don't know how. I don't know what we're going to. It's going to be great. Just tune in next week, everybody. We're going to have a great time. Dan and I are going to work hard for the first week in a, of our lives we for always, this podcast. We're always working hard for this. For this not show. for this show. Are you working hard? I'm not working. I'm hardly working. Classic I have to joke. Watch a terrible movie. That's working hard. Not um, this week you didn't zap. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, maybe a comment or subscribe. And um, we'll be back next week with the uh, first annual Hate Watching inaugural Summer Blockbusters Hate Off. You said annual. We're doing it every year, baby. We'll every see you next year, week. Baby. Goodbye, everybody. Hate Watching.